Hello everybody and welcome to Thermal Physics Lesson 5. In the last video we looked at the gas laws and we looked at the four key gas laws that we need to study for A-level physics. Now instead of, sort of summarising them, re summarising them at the start of this video, we are going to be taking those, um, as I said, at the end of the last one and we're going to be looking at how to combine them all together. So rather than summarising them on here, we're just going to jump straight into the video. So here comes the reminder then. So firstly for Boyle's law, we had that pressure was inversely proportional to the volume. For Charles' law, it was volume was proportional to temperature. For Gay-Lussac's law, pressure is proportional to temperature. And then finally for Avogadro's law, the number of moles was proportional to the volume. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these four laws and we're going to try to combine them all into one more convenient law that covers all four of them and represents all four of them all at the same time, rather than having it being a little bit messy with four different laws. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, remember when we have the proportional sign, what we want to do is we want to change that into equals with some constant. So I'm going to do exactly that for all four. Um, so firstly, let's take Boyle's law, where we get P is equal to some constant. Uh, I'm just going to call it K1, multiply by 1 over V. Now, uh, I'm going to call it K1 because obviously we've got four different laws, and therefore we're going to end up with four different constants. Secondly, for Charles' law, then, V is equal to K2 times temperature. For Gay-Lussac's law, pressure is equal to the third constant times temperature. Uh, and for Avogadro's law, I'm going to write it as V is equal to the fourth constant multiplied by the number of moles. Now I've sort of tactically changed that round, but of course, um, obviously all I've done is I've just flipped over um, the order, whether we say V is proportional to N or N is proportional to V. Um, obviously the two mean exactly the same. Next step then uh, is this sort of new column that we've got in blue. I'm going to rearrange all of these so that all of my variables are on one side and all of my constants are on the other side of the equal sign. So again, let's methodically work through and do that. Well, Boyle's law, we need to multiply both sides by the volume. So what we end up with is that pressure times volume is equal to a constant. With Charles' law, we need to divide by temperature, so V over T is equal to our second constant. With Gay-Lussac's law, again, we'll divide by temperature, so pressure over temperature is K3. And then for Avogadro's law, we divide by N, and what we're left with is V over N is equal to K4. Now, we're almost there next stage is we need to combine all of these four together so that they all make sense and they're all equal to some combination of these constants now what i'm going to do i'm just going to quickly write i'm actually going to write down the solution first which is pv over n times t and then i'm going to show you how that is correct so again let's work through logically well on the top we've got p times v and that, of course, is Boyle's law. So we're happy with that. Boyle's law is represented. Next one, well, we've got V on the top and we've got T on the bottom. So that's Charles law represented. OK, so that one's, a, that one's fine. Uh, next then, well, we've got pressure on the top and we've got temperature on the bottom. So that's Gay-Lussac's law represented and then finally we've got volume on the top and we've got number of moles on the bottom and there is Avogadro's law represented. Uh, in other words if we take uh, any sort of pair of these uh, variables 
uh, and set the other two as constants, all we're doing is we're reducing it back to those four laws that we've already looked at. Anyway, that's the left hand side sorted. Obviously, what we need to do is the right hand side. Well, the right hand side are all constants, so it doesn't really matter how we combine them all together. What we're going to end up with is some constant as the result anyway. Now, the constant um, is known as the ideal gas constant. and it takes the symbol of capital R. Uh, now, we won't worry about that too much more for now. On the next slide, uh, we'll rearrange this, we'll, we'll get our final equation, and at that point, we can have a look at the value and the units of the ideal gas constant. So bringing that forward then, we've got PV over NT is equal to R, and, and obviously R is our ideal gas constant, as we've just said. Uh, and then finally, we just need to do a little bit of rearrangement. We're going to multiply both sides by N and T. And what we're left with is, as you can see at the top of the screen, is known as the ideal gas law, which is PV is equal to NRT. And that then is the ideal gas law. Now let's just make sure that we remember and we understand and we define all of our terms here. So P is pressure which is measured in Pascals. V is volume which is measured in meters cubed. N we know is the number of moles of the gas and will be measured obviously therefore in moles. T we know is the temperature measured in Kelvin uh, and then finally we've got the ideal gas constant now the value for the ideal gas constant is uh, actually very simple it's just 8.31 uh, there's no uh, standard form to do with this it is just 8.31 uh, now, the units for the ideal gas constant are joules per mole per Kelvin. Now, let's just, before we move on, let's just have a very quick look at this unit. So, joules per mole per Kelvin. Well, if we have a look at the right-hand side of this equation, so the NRT bit, we can see that we've got moles in number of moles at the gas um, and that will cancel out with the per mole bit in joules per mole per Kelvin. So those two bits cancel out. We've also got per Kelvin in the ideal gas constant and we've got Kelvin in the temperature. So again, from a unit's point of view, those two cancel each other out as well. What we're left with then is Overall, the unit of the right-hand side is joules. Now, from a unit's point of view then, okay, remember that we are just talking about units then. On the right-hand side, we've got the unit of joules. On the left-hand side though, we can see that we've got the unit of pressure, pascals, multiplied by the unit of volume, meters cubed. In other words, what we're saying is that this bit on the left hand side, so pressure times volume, the overall unit for that is joules and therefore that pressure times volume represents an energy. 
Now, I'm just going to leave that little bit of information there. As I said, in future videos, we are going to come um, on to kinetic theory. And that bit, that PV having the unit of joules, we're going to bring that little bit of information back out, as I said, in a future video. And hopefully at that point, it'll make sense. But make sure for now that you just store that little bit of information in the back of your head for now. Next then, I want to move on to having a look at uh, the constants, and, and obviously so far we've looked at one constant, which is our ideal gas constant, 8.31 uh, joules per mole per Kelvin, uh, and as we saw on the last screen, that feeds into the ideal gas law of PV equals nRT. Now the key here comes from this little n, which we've said is the number of moles of the gas. Now so far I've really been trusting your GCC chemistry knowledge to understand what a mole is. But really, and in all truthfulness, in physics we tend, for the vast majority of the time, not to deal with the number of moles of a substance, it's actually far more useful to us to look at the number of molecules. Now just to remind you, and again like I said I am trusting your GCC knowledge here, the way that we can calculate all of this is to say that little n, which is the number of moles, is equal to capital N, which is the number of molecules, divided by n with a subscript a which is Avogadro's number. So let me just come here, so number of moles for little n, big N is number of molecules and then N a on the bottom is Avogadro's number uh, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Now uh, technically if we're going to put units on this um, the unit of Avogadro's number uh, is per mole um, number of molecules is obviously dimensionless. Uh, and the number of moles is obviously moles. Okay. Now, if we, uh, if we now substitute uh, capital N over NA into the ideal gas law that we've already got, so we end up with PV is equal to, well here comes the substitution, so it's N over NA, and then we've still got R and T. Now, rearranging this again ever so slightly, I'm just going to now say, I'm just going to move along what exactly is divided by Avogadro's number. I'm going to say number of molecules multiplied by, and there are all our constants, multiplied by t. Now obviously if I just sort of plop up the top, uh, what we're really saying is n, sorry not little n, what we're really saying is n r t over n a. But I'm just sort of moving around to show you the next stage of it. What we can do then is we realise that r and Avogadro's number, so the ideal gas constant and Avogadro's number, they are both constants. They're both fixed values. What we can therefore do is we can now redefine those as a new constant and just one constant. And we write it as a lowercase k with a subscript of a capital B. That then, uh, K with a lowercase, uh, with a subscript of B, that is known as Boltzmann's constant. Uh, 
uh, and the value for this now you can um, you can have a calculator this yourself you know what uh, R is 8.31 you know what Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 so you can calculate it yourself um, but the the given value for Boltzmann's constant then is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 and the unit for that again you can convince yourself of this but will be joules per Kelvin what we end up with then is two um, sort of subtly different views of the same equation um, so firstly we have PV is equal to nRT uh, and the other version is PV is equal to nKBT now you can see that at least the basic idea is exactly the same we still got pressure times volume on the left hand side of both of them and we still got temperature on the right hand side of both of them the subtle differences come in exactly what measurement of the amount of stuff we've got which then changes the constant so obviously in this version in lowercase n is an nrt we've got the number of moles Uh, and of course we've got the ideal gas constant R is equal to 8.31 joules per mole per Kelvin whereas in the right hand side we have the number of molecules and the constant then is Boltzmann's constant which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. Now, realistically, from your point of view, um, both of those equations uh, are obviously correct. Both of them apply equally. Uh, there's nothing necessarily from your point of view which favours either one. A lot of it comes down to, again, if you're faced with a question, you just pick the one that's going to suit you better. If you're given the number of moles, use NRT. If you're given the number of molecules, use NKBT. Realistically, though, as I said, in physics, we tend to use the right-hand one a little bit more. So PV equals NKBT. Uh, for a couple of reasons, mainly like I said, number of molecules is more useful to us. Uh, and also Boltzmann's constant appears elsewhere, so it does appear in other equations, whereas the ideal gas constant R only really appears in the ideal gas law. So here is the question for this video. Uh, the pressure of water vapour at 20 degrees Celsius is 2.33 kilopascals. Given that the mass of one mole of water is 18 grams, calculate the density of the water vapour. As usual, pause the video at this point, have an attempt at answering it and come back when you think you've got an answer. So on the face of this, there, there, there seems to be, um, maybe you've come across the case where you think there's a little bit of information missing, but with a little bit of clever algebra and clever manipulation, uh, we can solve this. Now we're being asked for the density of water vapour. So we know that density is mass divided by volume. But the, uh, the other key piece of information that we've got is the mass of one mole of water being 18 grams. Uh, in other words, if we were to take the mass of uh, the entire um, the entire vapour that we're looking at and we were to divide it by the number of moles, then what we would end up with is 18 grams or 0 0.018 kilograms. In other words, what we can see then is that the mass is equal to 0.018 multiplied by the number of moles. Now, when we substitute that back into the density equation, what we end up with is rho is equal to, well, we substitute in now for mass, so 0.018 n over v. 
The next stage then is to have a look at this bit here, which is the N over V bit. Now from the uh, ideal gas law, if we take PV is equal to NRT, we can now rearrange this to make N over V the subject of the equation. So what we need to do is we need to divide both sides by V and we need to divide both sides by RT. What we're left with is that N over V is equal to P, the pressure, over R times T. Now just be careful here, um, I know that obviously rows and P's can look very similar. Um, obviously make sure you don't mix up what's density and what is pressure on this. Anyway, coming back to it then, uh, the density will now be 0 0.018 times the pressure divided by the ideal gas constant multiplied by the temperature. Now at that point we can pop some numbers in, so 0 0.018 times at the pressure which is 2.33 times 10 to the 3 divided by the ideal gas constant 8.31 uh, multiplied by the temperature and remember again it's in degrees C so we just need to add 273.15 to it. Plugging that all through then what we end up with as the final answer is 0 0.017 and obviously that will be kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, now when you think about it um, that ends up if we're going to put it in grams per meter cubed as well to give it a bit of context that ends up as 17 grams per meter cubed. Obviously compared to water in liquid form which has a density of a thousand kilograms per meter cubed uh, you can see how much lower density uh, water vapor is at 20 degrees than liquid water would be at the same temperature. So to summarise the video then we have derived the ideal gas law in this lesson. Now obviously that came from the four key gas laws that we looked at in the last video. There are two different forms of the, of the ideal gas law. We have PV equals NRT where little n is the number of moles. and R is the ideal gas constant which is 8.31 joules per mole per Kelvin. The alternative version then is PV equals capital N times KBT where N in this case capital N is the number of molecules And of course KB is Boltzmann's constant which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. So that's it for this video. Uh, don't forget when we're talking about um, the ideal gas law that you need to use really the last two videos in conjunction with each other to really get that full understanding of it. Uh, but as usual thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.